and welcome back to Foster Culture, guys. I personally do apologize for being quiet for the past few weeks. Getting back into life here in South Africa has been a roller coaster, and I have been spending a lot of my time focusing on the speech. So, without further ado, let's head right into it. Right, so this afternoon, just something different. You've had a very different day for the whole day, and we're going to continue with that theme. And so I'm going to introduce Mr. Seb Foster, who's going to talk to you about travel, but travel from a different perspective. It's going to be an interactive talk, so please ask as many questions as you can, um, and I'm sure he will make it extremely entertaining for you. So, Seb, go. Thank you. Hello, guys. Can everybody hear me? Perfect. Alrighty. So, first question I've got for you all. What do you guys see travel as? What is the definition of travel? Can anybody give me an answer? That means put up your hands and let me know, guys. Don't be scared. Nobody. Yes. Going somewhere. Going somewhere. Good. That is a good answer. Where specifically? Anyway, but hope. Actually, I think you've knocked on the head. So, let's start this talk. For the duration of, of this discussion, I want you guys to keep these four things in mind, okay? Travel is not tourism. I will debunk the whole theory in a bit. We'll discuss it, we'll break it down. Secondly, it is not as expensive as we all think it is. Who here thinks traveling is expensive? Leave your hands up. Good. This will be fun. Now, the third one, traveling is not impossible. How many of you guys think this year you will travel? Put your hands up. That's brilliant. Alrighty, good. So we've got a nice audience. And the last one is, I'm going to try and prove to you guys that traveling is the same as everyday living. Who thinks they're traveling right now? Ooh, where do you guys think you're going? Sorry, one at a time, one at a time. Put your hands up. Who's got a question? Who's got an answer? So the line goes, so Yes. Good, good. Alrighty, so let's get started. I'm going to show you guys exactly how to do this. First of all, I've got some questions and I've got some sweets. Do you like scissors? Oh, good. Okay, smallest lunch in the world. Let's shoot. First hands up. Over there, sir. Yes. Well done. Let me come over and give you a massage. Okay, the Vatican City. As you guys can see, it's 44 Bonker Square. It's the home of the Pope, home of the Catholic Church, and in my personal experience, it is basically one big museum. Okay, there's a lot of ancient artifacts. In fact, the Sistine Chapel is homed in the Vatican, as well as lots of statues of naked men carrying babies. Next question, very easy. Country number 50 states. Over there. Congratulations. Next question. Does anybody know where Angkor Wat, the temple in Southeast Asia, which country is situated in? Well, who was first? Cambodia. Cambodia. Well done. Cambodia is also a really, really nice place to travel to. Really unique. And a great place, Angkor Wat, to watch the sunset. Moving on, a little bit difficult. How many countries are in our... <laughs> yes. Incorrect. Who else is there? Who's got the hands up? Over there, the background there. Incorrect. That was the same answer here. Let's not. Let's not. Over there. 34. Correct. Alrighty. This is a little bit more difficult. How many countries in the world? Over there. Sorry? Not according to the UN, the United Nations 2019 current role. Try again. Incorrect. In the back over there? Incorrect. 195. Absolutely spot on. Okay. Now I've got one that maybe the older kids will know. Or if anybody's child from Mozambique. Do you hear from Mozambique? Alrighty, what is the secret ingredient in today's classic beverage? An R&R. &R? Yes, over there. 
Ron and? Right, so my question, why do you guys want this? <laughs> What's up guys, don't forget to walk correct, it is Ron. Tipo turns to Ron to be exact, and Spa gets a strawberry, in fact, not actually raspberry. Not bad guys, not bad, I just thought that was going to take longer. Congratulations. You guys give yourselves a round of applause. If I see you guys in a little bit, I'll answer a few more questions and then we'll be progressively harder. It's okay though. So, let's rush through the content of the speech because I know this is probably the most boring part. So, I'm going to start off by explaining to you guys who I am and why I'm here talking to you. Followed by debunking the difference between the definitions of travelling and tourism. Or, as my word I like to call it, touristing. Though that's not actually a definition. Shout out to the Oxford Dictionary. Please include me. Then, next, I'm going to explain to you the ease of travelling and question whether it is actually easy breaking down passports, budgeting, filing flights, and then hardships. After that, we're going to go further and break down the dream of travel. By this, I mean many of us sitting in this room today look at travelling as a luxury, a dream, something which maybe one day, if we're financially secure, we can achieve. Correct? Yes? No? Okay, good. Break that down, you guys can see there, and then I'm going to go to the beauty of travel. The finite things that you can only learn from being on the road. Something that's difficult for me to get across to you guys, because again, I feel you have to experience it, but I'll try my best. So, moving on. If you don't mind, as I said, I was actually up until grade 7, a British house student. I was sat in these seats that you guys are today, and I've listened to speeches just like this. So I hope I'm not too boring. First of all, I started my travel experience in the homeland of South Africa. I was born in Salomon and grew up here before leaving Bridge House to go to Grahamstown to study at St. Andrews College. After that, I took a gap year. Oh no, sorry. I took a holiday with my family when I was 10 and we went to Namibia, Botswana, Zambia. It was pretty cool. Who's been to any of those countries? Nice. Okay, who is from any of those countries? Nice. After that, well, as far as I can remember, I was lucky enough to go overseas to visit some of my family members in the United Kingdom, of which on one of my travels, my first solo travel at 12, on the way back we got delayed and my grandparents and I got pushed up the first class on an Emirates flight from Birmingham, England to Dubai, UAE. I don't know if any of you guys have flown first class before. Who has the hand up? Ooh! So you guys know how cool it is when that sushi bar next door to you. Or over that flat bit. Very nice. Don't get used to it. Do not get used to it. Okay? That is for Moving on. On my gap here, I did in 375 days 18 different countries, of which I explored the United States and Mexico, Southeast Asia, I did Thailand and Cambodia. Followed by, over the past few years, a little bit more of Africa, and then the big one. A lot of it. But it's a bit of a weird flick, I know. But there's more. So, 17 countries, guys. 17 countries over... I don't know how many years. So yes, I think it's quite safe to say the reason I'm here is because I have a fair amount of experience when it comes to travelling. These are the big questions, right? Are you guys asking yourselves that? No? You don't want to know how it goes. Shall I say goodbye? Yeah. Oh, okay. No, I'm joking. I know some of you are. I know some of you are interested. So I'm going to get into the integrity. Okay? Exactly how I afford to do this, how I do it, and how I am so lucky to be able to live this life. So, first of all, as I said, guys, we're going to debunk traveling versus tourism. Okay? My definition is not the same. In fact, it's very very different. So to start off, I'm going to take on touristing. As I said, it's not actually a word, but for the speech I'm going to make it one. <coughs> touristing is the cliche holiday. Okay, how many of you have gone on holiday? Went on a holiday during December with your family? Alrighty. Who went outside of Africa? Who went to the Americas? Who went to Asia? Okay, cool. So we've got a lot of travellers in the room. That's nice. Or are you guys tourists? Tourists or travellers? Travellers, put your hands up. 
Taurus, put your hand up. Okay, how many of you went to your families instead of hotels? Put your hands up. Okay, how many of you went with your families? Or well, people you didn't go with your families? Put your hands up. Oh, there's a number of you. Good. Respect. How many of you went and explored the cliche tourist landmarks in those countries? Now, can you give an example? Where did you go? In Italy. Alright, can you give me an exact city? Florence, beautiful city. Beautiful city. Only managed to spend a few hours there, but alas, you got a story basically coming up. Okay, who else? Who's seen Life Power? I promise you all that. Who's been to New York? Times Square. Good, good, good. Okay, Rio de Janeiro. Wow, we've actually got quite a few people who've gone around the world. Like it, I like it. Okay, so basically, now, here's, as you can learn, you guys can all read, I assume that, so you know what's on board. Touristing for me is a lot of the expensive stuff. It is going to the nice places. It is the cliche, relaxing holiday away from your family. Now, I don't know how many of you have family like mine. A holiday with my family is not relaxing. Okay? It is not, I understand you. It is not relaxing. It is not a getaway. Okay, you might have moved homes, that's what you've done. You've moved homes. You're still at home. You're still comfortable. You're not culturally immersed. Okay, how many of you have gone overseas and picked up a new lounge? You guys are really taking me out here. Okay? How many of you go on holiday where you're stress free, absolutely stress free, and you've learned, you've come back feeling enriched? Nice, nice, nice. How many of you guys are in the corner there? What grade? Grade 9. Grade 9. Nice. Where am I with tricks? Hey, awesome guys. We'll get around to that. So, let's move on. Now, high definition of traveling. As I said, you guys want to all read? A lot of it is about cultural awareness, in my sense. It's about cultural awareness paired with personal growth and exploration. In 2016, when I took a gap year, within the first 12 days, I gave my dad a ring, and he's sitting up there, and he can record as clearly as I can. I gave him a call and I told him, in 12 days of being alone in a different city, in a whole different circumstance, with a whole new lifestyle, I had learned more about myself as a human being than I had in 12 years of education. Let us settle. I sat on these chairs with you guys before. For 12 years, I sat in school, and we learned a lot. Valuable lessons. But not one of them essentially prepared me for the growth I would go, in, go through with myself. Okay, I knew exactly how much sleep I needed to function, exactly how much food I needed to consume. Okay, I went from being a fat high school kid who ate four or five meals a day to being okay getting by on two cheap meals. Alrighty? Also, I walked a whole lot more. Guys, traveling is brilliant for the fitness. Anyways, so, personal exploration. Growth, as I said, you learn a lot. Not just about yourself, but about everything around you. You immerse yourself in a culture you're, you're foreign to. It's not about going there and sitting down and saying, this is where I am from. This is what I do. It's very much, when you're immersed in a traveler's culture, it's about sitting back and learning from others and sharing experiences, creating memories. This is why I've got a huge issue with tourism and traveling. I feel with tourism, you can't just take a slice of home and move somewhere fancy, something new, exotic. But you do the same thing, so you don't really learn. So I'm going to go quickly to that story. As I said, in 2016 I took a gap year, and I was fortunate enough to go interrail through Europe. Interrail, for those of you who don't know, is an initiative where you can buy essentially one ticket, and for a duration of how many trips you get, you can take a train anywhere around Europe or in the countries that are part of it. Which is a lot, it's a lot. And I started off in Milan. Anyone know where Milan is? Where's Milan? Italy. Congratulations, good. Hey, you guys were aware, I told you this before. Started in Milan. Went down to Pisa. Where's Pisa? Okay, you guys know that right, so sleep away. Okay, went down to Pisa, saw the leading statue, another leading tower, then on to Rome, so the Colosseum, explored the Vatican, 
and then went down to Pompeii. Anybody know what Pompeii is famous for? What about the volcano? What did it do? Whoa, 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 ladies and gentlemen, ladies and gentlemen, one at a time. Yes, essentially, as far as I'm aware, Mount Vesuvius erupted a long time ago, and I think it's Mount Vesuvius, and the whole of Pompeii was destroyed. Can I throw this over to you? Hey, 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 hand it over. We got down to Pompeii, someone I've been wanting to go for many, many years. And yet again, I call my dad. And I burst into tears. And he asked me, he was like, son, what is going on? Why are you crying? And I said to him, I've been traveling now for about a week and a half, exploring, you know, really doing what, what I thought I loved. But there's something missing. I don't feel like I'm traveling. Now, for those of you who don't know, Italy is quite an expensive country, and I was on a very tight budget. I was on a budget, I think, 25 euros a day, and my accommodation cost me about 50. Now, 10 euros a day to live doesn't get you very far. I wasn't making friends, I wasn't socializing that much, I was missing out on a lot of that quality bonding that you experience when you're traveling. So this is what kind of led me to understand something. Traveling is about friends, it's about people. It's not about where you are. I stand by this. What makes traveling opposed to tourism, tourist thing, is that the people you meet, the relationships you make, they last. Me making friends became very, very easy when I was traveling because people are completely themselves. Not only do you find lifelong brothers and sisters and travel families, but you can also find out you, right? I know. Moving on. <laughs> Let's debunk the next myth. The traveling is only for the luxurious. The guys, the one percent. The ones all the dollar. Alrighty? Who thinks, who thinks you have to be fairly wealthy in travel? Oh, come on, guys. Put your hands up. Okay? I thought so. When I was a red, I thought I had to go to university, study something interesting, get a good job, and then maybe one day retire into a cultural travel. You know, exotic cruises on an old and grey. Rubbish. <laughs> so, let's break it down. Passport special, funny plans, and then the hardships. These things are stupid books in my idea. My mind, stupid books. Alrighty? I'm not the only one who thinks this. If you ever go traveling and you immerse yourself with other people with the exact same position as you, you will all, you will very quickly realize that people who travel don't understand why a human created idea like borders exist. Now I'm not going to get political, I really am not, because essentially passports are books that create a hierarchy because some politicians like others, regardless of that, okay, we all know that if you have one of these, we're a bit screwed, right? <laughs> who only has a green mamba? The green mamba, for those who don't know, that is the name given to a South African passport because it is deadly and famous. <laughs> who has dual citizenship or a foreign passport? Okay, you guys are like me. You have no excuse. So, now I'm going to talk to those of you who have straight up. Three numbers. Listen to me very carefully. You do not have to feel like you cannot travel. This is still possible. Okay? How? How is it possible? Well, actually, let me explain what I mean by the travelers' utopian idea. A lot of travelers, first of all, believe that what would be ideal is to have a world where people are free to, to grow and free to explore. Okay, that is something I will hopefully work towards in my life. Trying to get relations between countries and allow people, everyday people, to travel. Because that's what you learn. You learn a lot about other people. You learn a lot of things that you won't learn at home. Moving on to so getting around. Who of you, who, who you have only a Southern passport and feel like you're restricted to South Africa? Come on guys, be, be, be bold about it. Okay? I, I felt the pressure. There have been times where I can't, can't use my British passport. 
Okay? So there are ways around this. I know visas are out of hassle, but the good thing is that on some visas, for example, the Schengen visa, which allows you to travel to multiple countries in Europe. Now, yes, it might put you back. I think it's two and a half, I'm not too sure, but you can get extended visas. I let you go for a long time. You, you plan, you save up, you spend the money on a visa, you get the visa, and then you're not to Work visa on the Okay, those of you who, when at any point you do decide to go traveling, maybe to start the school, maybe for exchange, you can get visas that you, you apply through them through work visas, and if you get approved, the company you work for might actually pay it for you. That's exactly what happened to me when I went to the States. I played as a I coached and played soccer, and my visa expenses were completely reimbursed. So look out for that. If you want any more questions, we can ask. We can ask at the end of the speech. All you guys can do this. <laughs> I'm joking, but it is something I was going to joke about. Those who don't know it is German, and the German passport up until the beginning of last year was the strongest in the world. Now it's the Singaporean. <laughs> the right word. So the passport of Singapore is not the strongest as far as I'm currently aware. So do that, but be smart about it, okay? Now, to the old question. This is the one thing I get asked the most about. How do I afford my travels? Does anybody have any ideas? So fine, I'll give a speech and everybody gets the first one to go. Uh, sponsors? Eh. <laughs> Sorry? I am a student. I, I would love to think I'm rich but only in soul. Okay, at the moment my bank balance is looking quite questionable. That either? Mm -hmm. Yes, sir. I mean, well done. You can read, I really appreciate that. <laughs> Anybody else in the back there? True. True. Work with each other. There's also another option. Now, give me you two over there. Say it. One of them. Journalism. Yes, I have done that. It didn't bring me any money, but I know I've got a very good friend, and it's Danny. Danny literally travels all right. So, sorry. <laughs> what? <laughs> Street point. Yes, actually, funny story. I have done that. I'm a bit pissed. I got money for an app to tell me to stop singing, but it's okay. I still managed to afford my two euro pizza. So, guys, thinking local. Again, I said this is my whole level of talk for a few people this. There are essentially three components, four if you count the last one. My golden rule, what do I mean by that? So, the way I see making money for traveling is there are 12 months in a year, correct? Yes. You said no. Yes. Okay, good, no, 12 months in a year. Now, in my current situation, I'm a university student, which means, believe it or not, I have a lot of free time. Okay? So I plan essentially every single year to travel for at least two months, which means I've got 10 months of the year left. I spend a large portion of that at university. I also spend a small portion of that off of exams before I go traveling. So the way I see it is that I always try to make sure that in the majority, 75% of the time, or the majority of the time, let's say four months or five months prior to my travels, I am slowly making 75% of my total budget. I mean, this is where the hustle comes in, guys. You hustle. Okay, you know those times you want that extra cream soda? Don't you? Those times you want that extra bag of chips? No. Alright? I always say this. Traveling, it's a lifestyle. You don't just start traveling and you catch a flight. In fact, this is where the other 25 comes in. Okay, 25% of my budget is always made within 15 to 25 days before I get on the flight. Okay? Now, does anybody have an idea what sort of jobs I do? <laughs> yes! How, many, how much money do bartenders get paid? Or waiters? Tips? Men? Yeah. Guys, I'm not any different to a lot of people, okay? I hustle. I do the normal jobs. But when I work, I make
make money. I don't spend it. Okay, beautiful thing about working in a restaurant? There's food around you. Eat the food. Don't buy it. Okay? I don't know if you know this, but my dad owns or owned pizza restaurants. Pizza restaurants have free dough. I made six grand in about three weeks because everything I made, I kept. And I ate dough. <laughs> With Parmesan cheese on it. <laughs> Alrighty, so guys, I know right now this is a little bit, a little bit intense, okay? The hustle is real. Hustle, hustle, hustle. It's not comfortable. Traveling isn't comfortable, but I feel that is when we all live the most. So I said, cut, 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 that's my other thing. Any unnecessary costs, I know you guys might not have this at the moment because, you know, you're still, I think for a large portion of you still, you know, your parents still provide you food, you don't pay electricity or phone bills. Why fun? Wow. <laughs> Dance must fall. It's time to go. It is very, very expensive. But you guys must cut, okay? Any unnecessary expenses, cut, cut, cut. Because in essence, traveling essentially is living in a different place. Now you guys, I'm sure, will learn the older you get, your natural living expenses are what you usually have you usually spend. Now just essentially what you have to do is transport that to another part of the world. And then hustle, hustle, hustle. Okay, moving on. Once we get to the place, how do we spend our money? Give me a, give me a country. Anybody? <laughs> Spain. Spanish. So, Spain, I was recently actually in Spain, in, oh gosh, your country, your country. So, once we're in Spain, how do we save our money? How do we make it work? I recently took a trip during, this, during January, I went traveling for 30, 36 days and I blocked my high experience and while I was there, I had a budget of about, let's say 30,000 rand including my clients. Okay? Now, that sounds like a lot. Notice when you convert it to euros, matter. Capiche. Alrighty, so, how do we do it? Let it go your assumption, okay? Like I said, within 12 days of my travels, I learned more by myself. You can survive on the of food. Just eat well, okay? Do things correctly. Focus on what makes your travels happy. What I mean by that is, you know, if you love museums, Spend the money on museums. Now, something that people don't talk about a lot, the emotional intensity. I always say about traveling is just, you're either in bliss, or you can get very, very sad, very quickly. You know, if things are tough, it's tough. But it's happy. Things are going great. Be the best time of your life. Okay, that's why I fall in love with, with traveling. It's literally love. Okay, does anybody know the travel buggers? Nobody know the travel buggers? Anybody? Hands? Hands? Somebody who has asked a question? Nah? Oh, you have asked a question, haven't you? Guys, if you have asked a question, who knows the travel buggers? I will give you a visit. Sir, have you asked a question? No? Okay, tell me, what's the travel bugger? Sorry? Not quite. The need to continuously go traveling, correct, sir. The need to continuously go traveling. Okay, the travel bug is something that makes, when you get home, this is possibly the hardest thing, that's the hardest thing I've ever done. Okay, I spent six months off my gap here, unable to cope with the ch change from being a tra being a traveler's anti-society to being an asylum society. People ask me what my biggest culture shock is. Okay, I've been to 29 countries. My biggest culture shock? Okay, somebody who's lived in South Africa for 19 years, 18 years, okay, came back one year later, did not know what was going on. Okay, South Africa is confusing us. It's a whole other ball game. There is so much going on, but it's beautiful. Once you get back into it, after six months of like hearing mental therapy, you get back into it, okay? Why do I go to that? Because going from 
one place, we're making friends. It's just easy to go back to a place from South Africa. Not just South Africa. You know, where to be someone's best friend, you have to know their aunt's maiden name. You have to know their brother's birthday. You know their favorite color, their imaginary friend. Okay, there's a lot of things you need to know. Okay, people open up a whole lot better without more authentic. Who knows what, it, what authenticity is? Yes? Being real. Yes, essentially, essentially authenticity is being real. Can you catch it? Okay, another thing though, you get very used to it, even though it hurts. Same device. Who here hates the bars? Get used to it. Okay? The difference is though, most chapters don't like saying goodbye. They say cheers for now, I'll see you soon. And that's true. I've seen a number of my traveling friends over the years. In fact, I go close to say that some of my closest relationships are with people who are halfway across the world. Okay, whoever you feel that you can call somebody across the world right now, they'll pick up. Good. Cherish them. Cherish your friends. Okay, time to break down the dream. Okay, I think you guys are following my drift here. Travel isn't impossible. Great. I think all of you are great audience. You guys know traveling isn't impossible. So, breaking the belief, guys. Traveling is reaching every one of you. Who here, who here wants to travel as often as I do? Hands are going up quite slowly, but they're going. Okay, who wants to know that they're going to go and explore a different country, multiple different countries, twice a year? Okay, who here feels that they will not be able to travel? Come be honest, because you guys are the ones I want to help. Sir? <coughs> Sir? Do you feel you able to travel as often as I do? Do you feel you able to travel as often as I do? Or do you fear not being able to travel? <laughs> okay, so who, who does have a fear? You know, guys, and it might not be the fact that it's financial insecurities, it might just be confidence. Who do you fear is walking into an airport by yourself? Don't put your hand up. I completely understand. Okay, I cried. I cried. Many times. Okay? There is nothing worse than being scared of the Dubai airport. Yes. Guys, please, please, be respectful. Yes, ma'am? Uh, yeah, I also feel like really nervous. What skills do you most about traveling? Um, that I don't like, have a safety net, like if I'm alone and I need help and I don't have anyone. Spot on. Yeah. Guys, that is one of the biggest excuses about traveling. It's the fear that you might, something might go wrong. Now, ma'am, with all respect, can I tell you what people have told me in the past? Things can go wrong right here. Okay? Things can go wrong in South Africa. Things can go wrong in your bed, anywhere. Okay? Things can go wrong. My mom, my mom didn't want me to take a gap year. Okay, she wanted me to go to church university. There is a lot of fear, you know? there's a lot of fear that things can go wrong, okay? I know personally friends who have been in heart crashes in Bangkok. Who's ever been to Bangkok? You guys know that that's pretty much likely. Okay? Bangkok's crazy. I myself have picked up really bad injuries on the way. I got bitten by a shark, and I'm joking actually. What happened is I stretched in the morning, got up by a fan in <laughs> in Florida, and I had a really big gash, guys. Thankfully, I was not people who could help me. But you know, if this was, if this had happened when I was in, yeah, anywhere else, to say, if I was when I was in Italy and I had nobody around me, it's scary. It is very scary. Okay. But the reality is, it didn't happen anyway. So why not happen? Or why not make it happen when you're having a good time? Okay. Here you know, all the reason me that some of the best memories you may have when you've been struggling. We've been outside of the we got one as you really cool. Okay, so <laughs> I love that one. If you guys if you guys
Because the planet is will not crash, okay? Crashes are very rare nowadays. They really are. Okay, especially on commercial airlines. Do not have that fear. Do not have that fear. Okay? So, let's talk about how we're gonna achieve it. I see, I mean you guys saw these. See the traveling is not about going overseas. Okay? It's not about going out to Africa. As I said, I've taken a road trip a few years ago. I went on the garden route and that when it comes to traveling with a friend of mine. You guys can travel everywhere. There are plenty of places. And Cape Town itself is one of the places where there are so many things to see. I mean, even yesterday I realized that there was a part of the peninsula which I didn't even know existed. Okay? I know Paul Buffari, even my South African geography, correct? Guys, just explore. Okay? Presence Award, who here does Presence Award? Do it. All of it. Go, go, go. Okay? I can personally vouch for it. You travel. During my presence award, I was lucky enough to go to Namibia to do kayaking down the Orange River. Okay? okay? It is still a form of travel. Do something that pushes you out of your comfort zone. Exchange, who here has or wants to go on exchange? Good, I know we is a very good exchange center. Okay? Use it. Maximize it if you can. Okay? I understand it's a little more pricey. It's a little more less traveling and more just learning a different culture, but use it. Please. Get yourself into different environments. Now, who of you are taking Gambia? Red lines? Good. Okay? If your parents are you to the university and you guys want to go on Gambia, I'd like to say please sign up yourself. Okay? I was very fortunate when I could make the decision. I know some people might not be. Try and sign up for what you dream. Okay? If you do start to take gap here, you guys can always contact me if you need help, but things I suggest, okay, I did a lot of work in my gap here. It wasn't just me cruising around on the beach all day. Okay, gap here essentially is a taste of life, it is the first attempt at failure. Okay, I failed numbers of times. My dad, and my mom, and my brother, okay, know about all the failures I experienced on my gap here. It's fine. Okay, those are the best memories. Okay, when you're down, you can only go back up. Work away is also another thing, and summer camps, it's a whole other thing to guys do the research, plan properly. Okay, don't start planning after your files, I start planning my gap here and grade 11. Okay, if you ever need any help, I'll give you guys my contact because they're more than welcome to, to ask help. Okay, and that's at the university at the end there. Who do you want to go to university? Good. Okay, the best thing about university is you work hard, you play hard. Okay? You have a lot of free time. Maximize it. Okay, another big question I get asked. So, group travel. Who wants to tell me what they think is better? Team tour. Huh? Solo. Solo? Do the solo. Stand up, please. I want you guys to stretch your legs. Stand up, stand up, stand up, stand up. Solo travel, stand up. Okay, sit down. Team tours. Stand up. Alrighty. Okay, sit back down, sit back down. I'll stretch the legs. Let me break it down for you. There is no such thing as solo travel. There is only individual motivation to get going. Okay, I consider myself a solo traveler. I don't travel in packs. But everywhere I go, I've got somebody taking a photo of me, or I'm going to send a banana suit with a whole lot of strangers. Okay, don't ask me the question behind that. Guys, you are never, ever alone when you're traveling. Okay, hostels, so what the term used to accommodation for travelers. Okay, there are full of like-minded people from all around the world. You make friends very quickly. Okay, don't ever fear that you'll be alone. I've been alone very, very seldom whilst traveling. Okay? Who feels more reassured that they can travel solo and not be alone? Put your hands up. It's hoping a little bit more, guys. Okay, good. Do not fear the solo ride. Okay. This is something I like. Travel is fine and life is beautiful. And I think no one will know that life is about lessons from learning. 
as I'm pretty sure right now you guys have heard me reiterate this all, okay? You learn a lot about yourself, about your body, about your mind. Essentially, all you're doing is growing as a human being. You're pushing yourself outside your comfort zone. Unfortunately, this is where the camera cut out for the final time. To recap, however, I think it is very important to understand that the biggest thing about traveling is just getting out there and doing it. As I always say, make like Nike and just do it. Escape your comfort zone, get uncomfortable, and do something which shoots your adrenaline through the roof. The best thing you can do is to drop yourself into a brand new situation, an unknown environment, and just push your body to the next level. See where you can take yourself. Find out what you can achieve. And of course, try and enjoy every second of the entire experience. And to Bridgetown School, thank you for this incredible opportunity. I do want to personally apologize for the breaks in the camera work. I promise you over the next few weeks, I will be doing a lot more talking to schools and I'll be recording a lot more. And so there will be many, many more speeches just like this one to bring you guys all the information you need. For those of you who would love to experience travel but do not know 100% exactly how to get around doing it, I have made myself available to help anybody who would like some advice in person. Please contact me on either Facebook, Instagram, or of course YouTube. And don't forget, guys, if you enjoy what I'm doing here and you would like to be a part of the team, go on to one of these platforms and join us. Go subscribe on YouTube. Give the page a like on Facebook and of course, follow me on Instagram. I promise you there'll be a lot more to come, many more speeches and of course, a lot more sharing of my knowledge to help encourage you guys to get out there and experience it exactly the same way that I do. So please guys, of course, as always, let's keep fostering this culture together.